What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about what is probably the most overlooked setting in all of Rocket League. Sounds like a lot of hoopla to make over a your controller settings, right? <laughs> Wrong. And that is Dead Zone. Now I'm not sure why more people haven't talked about Dead Zone settings, but my suspicion is that most of you all watching right now don't understand why they're so important. But before I get into that, only a small percentage of you all watching right now are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you haven't yet, please consider subbing if you find this video helpful. It's completely free and you can always unsub whenever you want. Anyways, let's talk about dead zone settings in Rocket League. Okay guys, let's start from the top. What exactly is dead zone? and why do I claim it's so important? Well, for starters, what Dead Zone does is it controls how far you need to move your joystick before an input is registered. Put simply, Dead Zone is a percentage, and the number you assign to it is what percentage you need to move the joystick for an input to register. So let's think about that for a second. The higher your controller Dead Zone setting, the farther you need to move your joystick before the game picks up that movement meaning the longer it's going to take you to make any action in Rocket League with a high dead zone. For example, imagine if you had a controller dead zone of 1.00, or in other words, 100%, and you tried to steer from left to right across your joystick. You see, you might make the decision to steer right in an instant, but mechanically it's going to take another fraction of a second for you to swing that joystick over, resulting in a lower overall speed of play. On the flip side though, the smaller your controller dead zone, the less distance you need to cover before the game registers the movement. And if you can see where I'm going, this would mean the faster you play in real time. This basic idea here is the reason that I actually lowered my dead zone setting a few months back from 0.10 to 0.05 when I was getting serious about improving my mechanical skill in game. And while I can't promise exactly the same for you, to me, it felt like taking off training wheels because every movement I made was almost instantaneous rather than delayed that slight bit. But before I get you too excited, there's another piece to the puzzle here, so bear with me. You see, another thing changing your dead zone effects is actually the accuracy of your joystick inputs. Now, the easiest way to see this is with a dead zone visualizer, and credit goes to Rocket Science for making this, but take a look here. What you'll see is as we increase our dead zone value, two things happen. First, you can see the red area in the center, which is the area that won't register any movement in game, increases as we scale our dead zone. But something you might also see is that this area next to it, this yellow area, is also expanding. The thing is though, while the game is going to pick up movement once it reaches the yellow area, it won't necessarily register that movement accurately. For example, any joystick movement that lands in that yellow area near the top of the visualizer is going to be registered by the game client as a true front flip rather than what it actually is. And the same thing goes with any movement that lands in that left yellow area or that right yellow area. The game will pick it up as a true barrel roll with no diagonal component, even if there is a diagonal piece. In other words, having too high of a dead zone can make it literally impossible to perform mechanics that require precise diagonal joystick movements. Think speed flips, half flips, even flip cancels, and the list goes on. Bottom line is, not only does having a bad dead zone setting make our play that little bit slower, it can also make our inputs inaccurately registered. So at this point, you might be saying, well, great, the lower the dead zone, the better. Let's just set it to 0.00. .00. That way we'll play with the fastest speed possible and the most accurate inputs. And to that, I'll say, yes, you're on the right track, but we don't necessarily want to go all out and do that because there is one more issue to consider. The reason dead zone exists in the first place is to prevent something called stick drift which is when the joystick sitting at rest is just slightly off center and it causes unintended joystick inputs. 
And to be clear, this is a really important feature because it safeguards old or beat up controllers from becoming absolutely useless if the joysticks on them lose their precision. But at the same time, it's important to realize that by default, with Rocket League's default dead zone setting of 0.20 that is, you're actually overcompensating a significant amount. In essence, correcting for that stick drift, but so much so that you're throwing away a good chunk of joystick precision and speed for no good reason. But okay, now that you understand controller dead zone and how it works, I'm going to cut to the chase and tell you exactly how to optimize it and fix this problem. That is, how to get our controller dead zone as low as possible without producing any stick drift. Now the best method I found to accomplish this was actually shown by a YouTuber named Trihouse. And put simply, it's just to go in your replays and use Rocket League's replay features to check your stick drift for you. So what you're going to want to do exactly is navigate to your replays in Rocket League by going to extras from the home menu and selecting any replay file. Then switch over to Flycam and drop your dead zone setting down to zero. Once you're here, what you should notice is that the camera will naturally drift one way or another, and that is that stick drift we were talking about earlier. So to fix this, what we're going to do is go back into our settings and tick up our dead zone by just a slight amount, maybe 0.01, checking to see if there's still stick drift. Rinse and repeat this process until you find a setting where even if you flick your joystick around a lot, when it returns to the resting position, you see no camera movement. The dead zone you end up with then is the lowest value you should consider using. Now for me personally, this method puts me at an optimal dead zone sensitivity of about 0.05, which is actually the most common dead zone setting among the pros. That being said, if you're used to having played on a higher dead zone, you can try the higher end of the competitive range, which seems to be around 0.10. Either way, if you can use this method to just tweak your dead zone sensitivity down just that tiny bit, you should see a pretty noticeable difference in your gameplay. And while it might be a little tricky to get used to this higher sensitivity at first, trust me, you're gonna thank yourself in the long run for making the switch. All right, with all that being said, the only last setting I want to mention is Dodge Dead Zone. And it's pretty quick to go over, so bear with me here. Dodge Dead Zone just controls how far you need to move your joystick before the game turns your second neutral jump into a flip. And so with this one, you don't wanna to go too low because it's going to make you prone to accidental backflipping when you try to fast aerial. So bottom line is, you can pretty safely opt for anywhere within the common pro range of 0.50 to 0.60 and not have to worry about Dodge Dead Zone ever again. Anyways though guys, I know that might have been dense at some points, but that is really all you need to understand about dead zone settings in Rocket League. So hopefully that was helpful, and if it was, you can show your thanks by liking the video to help get it out to more people. Also, if you haven't yet entered, I'm running a bunch of giveaways over on my Discord, so make sure to check them out if you haven't already. That's all I've got though, so as usual, thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.